All right, so you got a window sash. And if you notice right here, there's a gap on both sides. See, this one's bigger. You probably have your mortise and tenon uh, wood dowels in the joint that are no good. So you can see this one right here. See how it's bent in the middle? It's all smashed in there. That's from the expansion and contraction of the wood when it's hot and cold. What it does is it starts to bend that wood. And so what happens is somebody try to fill, try to put a nail in there and that's not going to fix it either. Um, this thing's going to be loose. And why is it loose? Is because that middle piece has shrunk down. It's no longer real thick. So what you have to do is just replace these wood dowels. Okay, and both sides are like that. You can see this one. See how it's bent in the middle? So what was happening is this thing was moving like this, back and forth, real loose. And you don't want that because when you open and close your window, you're gonna have you know you're gonna have a really loose window at the bottom, and the glass, the, the glaze is gonna want to loosen up on that area as well. So what you want to do is just buy one of these or make one of these. You can actually take an old piece of wood that's about the same length and cut off a piece and um, and then shove it in there. So I'll, that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, usually what I do is uh, I put a couple brad nails in there if it's uh, not that bad. But this one was really loose. So I'm actually going to just uh, replace the dowels. All right, I made some new dowels out of some wood. Rounded it off a little bit at the ends, made it wider on one side, and then I'll put it in, I'll hammer that in. And same one for this side. One of them's a little bit a little bit tight. And I'll hammer that in and see how it does. it broke it this one's going in good on this side I might have made it a little bit too big I'm gonna try to force that in there all right this one was a failure but this one made it in it's able to hit that in all the way and you can see that it's right there's a little bit shy but it'll work I can hit that in just a little bit more but that's much tighter than what it was. It was about an eighth inch gap. Now it's a lot tighter. It was about like that. All right, I found some of these dowels that I had extra laying around. They're a little bit shorter, but I'm gonna try them out. See how much shorter it is. About a quarter an inch too short, but I think it'll still work. So I took one of those and I rounded it out just a little bit, and left it wider on one side than the other. Let's see if we can pound that in there. Hopefully that works. I'm going to use a metal hammer here. All right, and that works. That actually worked better than my homemade one here. This one's still a little bit, so you can kind of rock it. So I'm gonna think I'll pull that one out and I'm gonna reuse, I got one more of these. I think I'm gonna use these instead. It's not gonna go all the way through the other side, but this is the inside. It'll be okay. I could always put a, a little bit of filler there or whatever, wood filler. But yeah, that's that's pretty solid. So I'm liking that. So that's gonna work. Too bad it's not a little bit longer, but as long as it gets through that joint here, let's see. So you can see why I'm short here. Just a little bit short. But of course up here it tapers off a little bit thinner. So I put this in there. Um, yeah, about a quarter inch short. Maybe I can countersink that or hit this one in a little bit farther. 
All right, since I'm only off a quarter inch, I mean, I made it through the tenon uh, a good quarter inch pass into the other wood. So I'm just going to put a little filler piece in there, glued in, just like that, and cut it off. That way it just fills up the hole. I'll do the same thing on this side. I mean, you can see the, the little dowels right there. Just a little short. So I'm gonna glue on this one, just so it doesn't look goofy. Big hole. Just shove it in there. We'll cut it off. Probably should wait for it to dry, but good enough. They do sell these uh wood dowels, you can get them at Ace. Home Depot, whatever, for a few bucks. I just don't feel like going to the store. And I had those other ones in stock. Just happened to have them hang around. And so now that's that's a lot more solid. I had a little splinter on the wood, so I went and glued that and fastened it for it to dry. But as far as this goes, that's that's pretty solid. A lot better than what it was. A lot better. Okay, now to strip this thing down, you do want to make sure your glass does fit after you crunch it up because sometimes um, these sashes are repaired and they leave a little gap here and then they go and put a new glass in with that gap and then your glass when you go and fix it might not fit. So always test fit it. I'm going to go and test fit mine make sure it fits. And if your glass, if your glass is not wavy, I don't, this is not wavy. And it's fairly thin you know it's a replacement glass all right so just test fitted the glass and it does fit in there so we're good to go to strip this and reprime and then when we put the glass back in after we prime this we can glaze it and get this thing looking like a new window again all right so i just finished up this window sash scraping it filling it and getting it ready for primer it's a lot like body work, you know, you put the filler. I even use a filler that's made by Bondo. It's a wood filler. And you can use that on the window sash to fill any little nail holes or any scuffs in the wood. I had a hole here for some reason, quite big. I filled that in, comes out perfect. Uh, if you got any voids down on the bottom sash, you can fill that in. Get it on both sides, okay. Sometimes this wood rots out a little bit, starts falling out, and just fill that in with some filler. But yeah, this is ready for primer now. So I'll prime this tonight, and tomorrow I can put the glass in, and then glaze it, and then I'll work on the other one tomorrow. I only did the top sash today. I worked on it for a few hours. This one was quite a bit of uh, work to fix, because it had that uh, piece that needed to be repaired here. But yeah, it took me a while. But yeah, that's how you uh, fix up these windows, these sashes. Um, once you get this thing solid, this base, this window sash, once it's 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 good, I mean, it'll last another 50 years or so. I mean, I mean, actually, it'll last indefinitely as long as you just keep painting it and keep the wood from rotting out. All right, so I finished up that primer on this sash. And I started working on this other one. That was really hard. Whatever uh, glazing they used on this one was really, really hard. It was difficult to get out, but I finally did. Uh, I got this glass cleaned up, uh, all the paint with the razor blade. Tomorrow I will have to go and strip all this off because it's pretty bad. And you can see this side, this is probably the worst one 
that bottom sash is just chewed up by something. So hopefully I can fix that with some, uh, maybe some, uh, maybe I'll use some uh, bondo with fiberglass in it. That's a little bit stronger than the wood filler. Um, yeah, cause that's pretty, it's like a dog was biting it or something. But yeah, I'll work on that tomorrow. That's it for today. That's what I got done.